Okay, here with us today is Jade Sundari. And Jade does so many interesting things today. Can't even mention them all from the top of my dome. So Jade, if it's okay with you, please tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Well, where can I begin? I'm from New Zealand. So this is not a part of Australia, as we were talking about just a minute ago. Um, and I'm from a really small town, actually. Um, I was born in the capital, but yeah, I grew up in a really small town in New Zealand. So um, yeah. Um, Your website says you're a holistic well-being mentor. Tell us more about that. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, my work revolves around understanding an individual's highest blueprint. And then I work with them um, to help them resolve barriers and blocks within themselves um, that are preventing them from aligning to their, their highest blueprint and timeline. Um, and I do this through a number of modalities and concentrations, which is through Kundalini embodiment and subconscious remodeling. Wow. Yeah. What is, so what is working Kundalini? With, working with people, um, generally i don't know even how they find me but generally not through a website it's generally through just an energetic connection i think and i'm very spontaneous and just follow lines of energy or threads of energy so that's even how i think i connected with you dustin i i just tuned in i can feel people um like very clearly from afar and just tuned into your auric field as I, I like his imprint his imp and I think just connected with you sent you a message and this is often how it works I think when I work with people all over the world and um yeah have a chat with them and then we go from there so I am trained in as a hypnotherapist and um and it neuro linguistic programming, which is working, you know, through through the light, like the lens of Carl, what Carl Jung works with, which is just uh, the subconscious and the superconscious and and that aspect of ourselves. But yet, Kundalini comes into it as well because it's all just different languages of the same essence that we're working with. Um, so it's through the lens of Kundalini as well. So all of these um, ancient modalities, but I work with them in a really fresh way for, for a new era, I think. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's it in a nutshell. And, and it follows a certain formula because it's through, through Kundalini, but then I'll bring in um, psychic architecture and tuning in to really seeing and feeling a person and understanding what they need to resolve in order to excel in any area that is their desired focus. That might be in, it's often actually through, through business um, and creating their life's work and purpose. So, you know, Dharma is what, is what we call it. Please explain, ex uh, please explain, what exactly is Kundalini at first? Because we, Justin and I, we don't know. Oh, really? Okay. That yeah. Okay. So, uh, Kundalini, it it was a it's a term that's been coined as a way to, um, to to I think it was coined by Yogi Bhajan, uh, but yet Kundalini is. It's your dormant life force energy, or it's your dormant energy that lays inside the body. And we can we can go through our whole lives without ever awakening Kundalini within ourselves. Um, it resides 
um, in the depth of our being, so down in the down in the lower chakras. For a woman, it's a slightly different placement of the exact anatomy of where it where it lives, but through different embodiment practices, we're able and focused intent um, as well, we're able to awaken this this potential energy. Um, it's like a concentration of your life force and inside that lays oh, how to describe lays a concentrated ball of your entire over soul's blueprint and when it unfolds and unfurls it begins to move through the body and it moves from your base chakra to your sacral up into your solar plexus and that's often as far as what the majority of people awaken it but we can work with it more consciously to bring it up into the heart the throat the um the third eye the midbrain and the crown and then connect to the cosmic mind or the infinite mind or the source mind however you want to frame that but this resides in all people and we're not we're not really taught how to how to unlock it within our body but when we do it's a game changer <laughs> wow. so that sounds super interesting <laughs> so kundalini is is an energy that you can set free so to speak Yes. Yes. Yeah. And you know that we I think we're living in really interesting times because there's a lot of people that are awakening kundalini and then they don't even know that they've awoken it or they're having spontaneous experiences with it. And then where I work with it is I've had um I've had spontaneous awakenings of kundalini um since my early 20s and then Uh, in COVID, there was another uh, spontaneous awakening. And now I work with it in more of a conscious manner to move it with mastery. And so my experience of it is very Gnostic. It was a direct experience. And then I went on to do studies and training to understand what it was that I was working with and how to master it and then how to... Oh, excuse me, and then how to, um, from mastering it, how to work with it with other people. And it, and it follows a similar pattern in all of us because we have the same anatomy and physiology, right? So we've got um, we've got one channel that moves up here and another channel that moves down here. So everyone has masculine, feminine polarities. We've all got the same energy centers. So it's something that can be worked with through through uh systematically but then also in the non-linear as well so once i started to delve into the studies of this um and the ancients they had different terms and different ways in which they would explain it or work with it but it's it's really um a process of concentrated intention and everyone had when when they awaken kundalini i think this is the most fascinating thing your own innate consciousness comes into full bloom and how that looks and expresses expresses for everybody is is really unique according to your own blueprint and um, and so that's what i find so fascinating about it as once we've awoken it we all are revealed our innate gifts that we came here into this lifetime to work with that were given to us. So there are our own mastery keys. And I don't think we even have vocabulary for, for what some of them are. You know, we can say like clairvoyant, clairsentient, psychic, and all of these terms, but what about the terms that are in between those, those gifts or a halfway or a merge or a collection of all of them? And so many clients that I'm meeting and working with are expressing some of these qualities so for me it's to facilitate that process is is um is very fascinating yeah and then what they do <laughs> after it is even more fascinating you know people launching their their courses and their and going next level in their lives and their careers 
Do you have clients that come to you maybe wanting to learn uh, the Kundalini and they don't have any idea what exactly it is? Yeah, yeah, um, yes. Um, I have worked with, with some people like that and um, I usually connect with somebody and just scan their energy and see what's open and what's closed and feel into them and see what part of their energetic body is open and if we can work together, if it's a fit. But in general, most people know what kundalini is or they have a loose kind of understanding. Um, in some cases, they'll say they had an experience and they would love to expand on that experience and, and bring it into more mastery. And that's usually where, where I come in and start working with them. For what wow. reasons do people come to you and want to learn Kundalini? Do you can you give us a few examples? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so they've had they may have had an experience of it, and they want to um, they want to channel that energy into because it's creative life force energy. Yeah, so it's a dormant energy. And so who who would you be if you were living a life completely fearless or who would you be if you were living a life from your highest potential? And it's from that principle that we begin with and then work with it from there. And then it becomes revealed to them with full clarity who they are and what they're here for and what that's meant to create. So I've had um, a client that I worked with and he was once a consultant for Forbes and then he went into the fields of law of attraction, um, real estate, investment, and then he went on to um, wanting to understand him, his own psyche and subconscious in a, in a different way. And then from there, he just bloomed into creating audio courses and courses and a podcast even. <laughs> um, as I mean, if it's your highest potential as well, and you know, you're working with this, this field, you can direct it to wherever you want to direct it to. So, you know, abundance, prosperity comes into this as well. So another client, he started just attracting money, massive amounts of money um, passively from the framework that he had set up. Um, so it's like, almost like a kinetic energy that starts to work benevolently with, your, with you for your greatest expansion. Does that make sense? Yes. It's not I'm not being very concise and I realize. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah. But when you awaken Kundalini, I mean that's something completely different of a experience. It's it's very tangible. Um you're like when it first happened to me, the first time I yes, I had been doing um some principles of purification, like cleansing. Um, I was I was working a pretty hectic lifestyle. I was a consultant. I was working in design and studying. I was partying a lot. And then I got into yoga. And so I did like a course of yoga for 10 days. And then spontaneously, I went into, I had an experience where I was, something exploded from the depth of my um I mean I want to say womb but it's it's like you know your base chakra and it ignited and moved all the way up through my body which felt like it was undulating and then I lost all consciousness of my body and everything went into into euphoric bliss and particles wow. of light um I didn't understand what that experience was but Later on, when I read about it, I learned about samadhi. And samadhi is a state of consciousness where you merge with the infinite as an individual. But we're not here to be suspended in that state. We're here to be practical and creative beings and logical beings and apply our mind, right? So it's a temporary state of samadhi. Um, there's three different stages of 
awakening. Um, and so I, I shut it off because of course you're expanded in a state of euphoric bliss and it's incredibly fascinating, but then I shut it off because it was foreign to me and scary. Um, so vomp back into the body and then I think I spent the next, you know, couple of years integrating that experience and diving deeper into studies to understand what it was uh, later on. And then had another experience of that as well. And then learned that there's actually keys or locks in the body and points um, that you can use to, to work with it in a way that it's not like um, a cathartic experience you can bring it in and start streaming it through your through your body all the time and the yogic masters used to used to operate that way on the daily basis which i found really fascinating too to hold that much pranic energy and then then the next question for me of course was okay so if this is available to me this is available to everybody and if it's available to us to unlock to have that that experience, then what, right? Then what should we do with this? This infinite awareness or this infinite understanding? What, what can we create that's going to be of benefit mm -hmm. to yeah. ourselves and to others? Yeah. Do you? I'm assuming you're you've gone through a few different uh, yoga lines at first before you discovered Kundalini for yourself right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I explored them all. Um, I think I'm a very curious person. So I looked at mm. Iyengar, Ashtanga, hot yoga, um, all different types of, you know, Pilates. Um, and then whatever I, whatever I get into, I don't seem to do by halves. So I just get right into it. So in COVID and the lockdown, um, I was working as a designer and I was working uh, prior to that, you know, I was working massive weeks. I was under a lot of pressure. I think my nervous system was very burnt out. So in the, in the lockdown period, I thought, right, what's this on YouTube? And I saw Russell Brand. He had a breathwork exercise. So I was like, wow, this is wild. Let's, let's try that. Did the breathwork exercise felt incredible and then it led me to kundalini and the algorithms and so i started doing a kundalini practice morning afternoon and night and i did that for 10 days and it was on the on the ninth day that i walked into the room and i started just jumping on the spot and then there was some music on so i was i was dancing and that's when it brought on a second wave of Kundalini awakening. This time it was so much stronger than the first uh, because I wasn't afraid. And so I felt I felt it in a split second, like engulf my body um, like a like a flame and merge with the again lost lost any sensation of body and felt every particle of my being filled with light and um it's oh it's it's hard to put it into words but I I wasn't afraid this time so I just surrendered to that whole experience um and what information that was inside that for me was almost like receiving a million downloads in a, in a moment of understanding and euphoria and my children were actually in the house at the time and they there was so much much like spaciousness that they just merged into the scenery um and then yeah and then I just walked into the kitchen and I was like yeah wow okay and went and did the dishes because what else can you do you know <laughs> like I'm just gonna Whew, come back into my body and ground that experience like wow okay um but that's when the writing begins and I started to walk around and and see everything in a very different light started to see energy feel energy sense energy communicate with energy um 
just everything becomes more fine-tuned. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about communicating with energy? Yeah, sure. So I think everybody is an energetic being here to have a human experience. And I think we know that innately. Um, so everyone has their own own signature of energy and like even for example the voice so i work a lot with with mine the 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 ancients would call it your cities so everyone has different frequencies of energy that we're able to tune into more so for me i the voice gives me a lot of information about a person. Um, so when I work with, when I have a conversation with people and you can hear the tones and the frequencies and the sounds, there's information in between about the contents of their embodiment or the contents of their subconscious. So it's almost like my mind is separated into three different points of awareness of listening to a person on a really deep level and so yeah I can I can tangibly sense when I hold up my hands because I can stream kundalini through my body and through my hands and then move the kundalini energy through their bodies and they will start to feel that and some people will describe it as an undulating like or a snake like energy and I think that's where the symbolism of the snake comes in mm -hmm. to a lot of uh because it does feel like a fluid it feels like mm, it's like a holy flow or or for me I see everything in like can break it down to the elementals so our body is earth the kundalini is like water and air so I can stream the energy through my hands and start to move that through people's bodies, but it was already there. I'm just connecting with it through my intent that we're connected to the same. So it's where sort of, I guess, quantum physics comes into play a little bit. Like there is no separation. We're all a part of the same fabric. We're made up of the same particles um, but yeah, for me in particular, the sound, voice, frequency is what I receive, or the the kind of the the yogis call it your city. Um, I work with that. Hmm. Although I, you know, I have had experiences where you know somebody's contacted me um, to work with them, um, and he's on like a construction site in downtown New York and he's going through a breakup and he's going through an awakening and he's in some level of trauma and he's reached out and said, you know, what's going on? And I've been able to visualize him and tune in with my mind's eye, trace the outside of his body, see where his trauma bodies are, see where he's blocked, see what's in there, what part of his heart chakra is closed and what part of his psyche or his ego has a barrier or uh, through his thought processes of what needs to be resolved in order for him to come into peace and then resolve what needs to be resolved in his relationship. So you can work with it on, I can work with it on any level, but here's the thing, there needs to be permission. Mm. It needs like, whenever I work with somebody, it's not like you're just walking around reading everybody, feeling everybody because that's not healthy for, for me in my own human experience, you know, going about my day, I've had that experience before and it's, it's quite overwhelming. So I, I just compartmentalize it and, and just, if there's an, you know, and work with somebody with permission. So if they're like, okay, I'm going to, engage you and we have an exchange and this is what's going on for me and then I'm able to work with them and tune in from from that that space that we've got that agreement with that's awesome I was going to ask you about your unique 
experience with this orb that you mentioned. I'd like to hear more about this story. Yeah, interesting. I would love to share. Um, and I think uh, I think one of my things that I'm really curious about is if any of the listeners have had a similar experience to the one that I had, because I feel like it's one of those mysteries that I cannot quite fully comprehend even though it was a direct experience and maybe you've even had somebody you know on your podcast that's also had a similar experience um you guys can tell tell me um excuse me so I was I was actually like uh we were camping so we were camping in the South Island of New Zealand and I'd also recently gone through like a detoxification so I wasn't drinking any alcohol wasn't taking any like psychedelics or anything like that um we were living just off like organic produce at the time and we were camping and we went to bed just as as normal and we were you know it was obviously like maybe the middle of the night and we were quite close to the ocean and I just heard a noise. It was a very insanely loud noise, like a rumbling noise. And it just, it just straight away, you know, you can try and frame it. What is this? I thought there was a train that was going to like, oh my God, like, did we put our tent next to a train track? I thought a train was going to pass through. That was what my instinct alerted me to. So there was this insane noise rumbling or just, I don't know. And then an orb, an orb came inside the tent and the orb was a light and it passed through my back and I just looked down in that split second, there was no pain. It was just a sensation and moved through my back. And I looked down and it came through my body and I could feel it moving through my body. And then it went out the tent. So it's moving through, it's moving, it's like, like a ball of energy. And it was moving through walls, through people, through me. And then it, I quickly, I jumped and I unzipped the tent and I, opened and I watched it and it just zigzagged off into the forest and it was gone <laughs> and uh, obviously you're like what the fuck you know holy shit what was that and but the the feeling that I got from it was that this was a um an intelligent energy sure. it felt friendly almost um I guess you like it was an unidentified flying object <laughs> which you know but it, it what was that and right. I don't have you know I, I have a lot of I have a lot of understanding of human nature and this the nature of this world but that I cannot I cannot understand what, what size and color was the orb it, it had almost like a um a blue a bluish uh, blue and yellow hmm. yeah blue and yellow it and there was when it went through my body i felt different after that evermore i was seven age 17 the way in which I experienced the world after that was illuminated completely. Like everything was in technicolor. I could see everything around people and in people. Um, everything became like extra sensitive. Um, and the energy that was, it, was, it felt like a, an amount of information that had been imparted on my body was... Yeah, I, I don't know how to explain. It was just more information. Everything just felt more alive and more awake, I guess you could say. Oh, 
would you say it would be the size of a golf ball or a basketball or how big was this orb? Oh, right. How big do you think it was? Um, um, I Oh, feel wow. like uh, it was about this, this big. Jesus. So I'd be terrified. it would, <laughs> it was that thing. Okay. <laughs> wow. Because we actually, we interviewed, uh, your your story kind of resonated with another story that we had on. Remember Dr. Scott that we had on? Remember her first experience with the UFO was this like orb that came into her bedroom with her sister and it like went around the ceiling and it uh, went around her and it zipped out the window and shit. So it just kind of reminded me about her story telling um, just being like a golf ball size orb. And it was, Golf it was ball, like, golf ball yeah, like this. yeah, like a golf ball size orb. But again, it was, it, she said it like it was burning like a red coal. Like it was like very odd. But that was Yeah. Wow. her first experience with UFOs. But yeah, she's a researcher and dedicated her life writing books ever since her experiences and stuff like that. So, no, so So I had to share I wasn't that. alone when the Yeah. experience happened either. So I was with my boyfriend at the time and he, his instinct was to scream, look out. And then he dived on top of me after it had passed through. It was too late and she went to shield me from, from it. And we just, I, I don't even remember the conversation after that. We just went to sleep. Um, and then the next day, obviously, I said to him, about last night, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> what, what was that? And he, he, he was in shock. So he couldn't even talk. He was like, I don't know. I don't know Uh. what that was. And so I was, I was like, okay, that's cool. I'm just going to accept that. He doesn't know he, he, what that was. And so I left it and, you know, we were, we were 17, he was 18. So we went about our lives. And then later on, I thought, you know, a few years later, I want to contact him again and see if he has any understanding or new insight on what that was. And, uh, you know, hey, do you remember that night that a flaming orb passed through my body in the middle of the night and, you know, flew off into the forest in a zigzag? You know, as I said, you know, it seemed to have a mission, a purpose. It seemed to know what it was doing and where it was going or it was like it got sidetracked and didn't mean to pass through me. Who knows? You know, you go through a few different thought processes. And so I had that conversation with him and he was still like just flabbergasted. He was like, I don't know what that was. I've never seen that, experienced that. I can't even frame it really. So it seemed to be an, an, a direct experience for me um, to have. Wow. that's incredible that's the geez, I, again being that big it's like a like a train light like you said like it, when it even it sounded like a train to you like some the rumbling and then you see this giant light coming at you <laughs> i think i'd be getting hit by something that's wow Exactly. Exactly. wow that's Yeah. crazy What is Yeah. your Wow. What is your opinion? Do you think it was there for you? It came for you. It was there especially for you to experience that. I do feel like there was an intelligent presence within that energy in that Hmm. orb um, because I got firsthand a sensation of it because it passed through me and, they, and it imparted an energy into me. after that, which did feel very illuminating. Um, and I don't, you know, it, 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 it just makes me, it just makes me come back to the laws of nature. Um, and, you know, like attract, like attracts like, perhaps there's some form of electromagnetic energy within me at that, in those, in that, those conditions. where I was a magnet for drawing that in but but what was it per se you know was it was it actually an entity that was exploring our realm or was it 
a concentrated form of electromagnetic energy that had formulated over the ocean and was started to move on its own accord Hmm. Um, because you know all 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 energy has a intelligence of its own so i don't i don't know if it was you know if it was being driven um or if it just was a part of nature itself mm-hmm. so that's that's something that i'm curious to to hear if you know i'm not sure if people write in comments or to you guys or share but yeah, I would be interested to hear if other people have had similar experiences. And when I was doing a little bit of research on your um, podcast just recently, you know, it's, I mean, we connected and, and you know, had a couple of chats and then you invited me here. So I didn't look at a great, at a lot of your guys, your yours and Daniel's podcast before this, but you know, you go on and I saw a few algorithms and there was, a, there was, um, I think a, a lady that worked in, in weather and she was filming the sky in Mexico and she saw orbs like moving around the mountain. Yeah. Um, yeah. um and so that's, that's something similar, I think that I've seen just recently. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Have you uh, visited any uh, ancient sites around New Zealand? Like, is there any um, pyramids or ancient temples? Or I know there's a lot of the indigenous people and they have stories themselves or even like wall wall carvings or paintings in New Zealand that you maybe personally gone and visit yourself. Because, I mean, New Zealand's um, probably a treasure trove for ancient astronauts. <laughs> maybe. I think Indonesia seems to be more so than New Zealand. But, okay. um, yeah, no, there's no pyramids here. Um, no. okay. I think we're so far down the bottom of the earth that things have perhaps eroded away. I mean, what comes to mind that um, when you say that is in our history, the indigenous people were the first to be here uh, in in our recorded history. Although there is amongst, there, there is, um, there are some ruins that predate the indigenous race. Um, so there's there are some rock formations in Ragland, uh, with some, and but I think these are more indicative of like um, you know the Viking explorers, and then there's stories amongst the indigenous people where the 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 white fairies came and taught them different skills like how to weave, and that's how they they learned to create nets for fishing and that so I think there's there are some stories there of um them talking about the white fairies or the ghosts um but it's not really what people talk about in school literature or is widely known um yeah I'm, I'm guessing too maybe there's a lot of cargo cults that started back in a long time ago um, with like just the earlier white settlers that first come over there with airplanes and then the, the indigenous are like oh my god that's the gods coming <laughs> you know they've never seen airplanes before and then they actually started replicating airplanes by uh, using straw and bamboo and they make runways out of the jungle and and uh, entice other airplanes to land on their platform to give them food and uh, equipment and stuff because the gods gave the these planes and stuff so again i think there might be maybe a little scattered other islands around new zealand that is inhabited with others that might have had the cargo no, cults very isolated there's oh, yeah yeah there's no other islands around us it, okay. antarctica yeah okay 
I, I maybe I thought maybe there might be those teeny tiny ones that you can barely see on a map. <laughs> but uh, again, yeah, yeah, Antarctica. That's another story. Yes. Yeah. That was very interesting. Unfortunately, we have come to an end already. We're running out of time. But mm -hmm. like I said, it was very interesting. Thank you so much for your time. And we hope to have you back on in the future. Thanks so much for having me. Please uh, stay with us for two more minutes, okay? Sure.